my god! It works! It works! At Maloka Arcade, there is this deal or no deal themed arcade game that's a trick to getting the maximum number of tickets. Basically, upon starting the game, you're shown 16 suitcases with a ticket amount displayed. The case is then closed and it goes through this shuffling animation. At the end, you pick your personal suitcase based on the numbers on the screen and you proceed to eliminate the other 15 suitcases from play, much like the actual game show. At intervals, you're given ticket deals to end the game, but if you decline all those deals, you get to open up your personal case with the tickets inside them. So, if you manage to pick a suitcase with the highest ticket amount, you maximize your play. The trick is, in the beginning, you can track the movement of these suitcases when they play this animation loop, and when it ends, you will know which suitcases correspond to which ticket number. What you can do is take a video of it and replay it in slow motion, but that approach is slow and prone to error. Plus, there's also a 10 second timer before you actually have to make a choice of your personal case. But what if there's a way to track it automatically without doing it manually? Hey everyone, my name is Justin, welcome to the Pass By Reference channel, and today we're going to see if we can track the movement of these suitcases in order to maximize the tickets from this Deal or No Deal arcade game using a webcam and some custom code. Alright, so what's the plan? My idea is to try to engineer a piece of software that would read input from a webcam to track the suitcases. Essentially, we'll be trying to develop this piece of software and that would be the bulk of the work. And with that, let's get started. But before any coding or implementation at all, we first have to do some research. I initially looked at some pre-existing techniques on how to track moving objects, and I ended up looking at these tracking algorithms that you can use in OpenCV. OpenCV is a library of tools for computer vision. I pulled it down, compiled from source, booted up my text editor, and tested these algorithms out. What I found out was that they weren't exactly what I wanted. As you can see, the bounding box to track the object did not move to the correct suitcase, because when it overlaps, the algorithm couldn't detect the cases from switching. So that approach is a no-go. I looked around for some more, but I wasn't able to find anything concrete. But at this point, I was at a bit of a loss because I wasn't sure on how to solve this problem. I was pondering for some time and it wasn't until one day in the bath the idea kind of suddenly just came to me. If we analyze the animation of the cases, we can actually see a predictable pattern. To describe this pattern, we can segment the animation into discrete units called transitions. A transition is defined as one full cycle of suitcases moving from one location to another. For example, here's one full transition. And here is another transition. To go further, there are basically two types of transitions, shuffles, and switches. A switch occurs when suitcases overlap each other. A shuffle occurs when a transition does not have overlapping suitcases. There's also a case where a shuffle and a switch can occur in the same transition. Finally, there's a case where some suitcases are transitioning while others remain still. Okay, that should be all the transition patterns. Notice that in each transition, each individual suitcase is moving horizontally, vertically, or not at all. Now after analyzing this pattern, here's my idea. We can use this predictable pattern to track the state of the moving suitcases from beginning to end. But how do we do that? Well, let's first try to isolate suitcases in this test video. I will use color segmentation to filter out the suitcases so we can go from this to this. The white represents the suitcases, which are the objects of interest. Now, imagine I place an edge down in the spaces between the suitcases. As the suitcases move, we can now detect that they are in transitioning by looking at the color of the pixel, which is white. The next step is to figure out how we can find the directions of these moving suitcases. After all, there are basically five potential directions, switch, up, down, left, and right. To illustrate each case, this suitcase is going up, this suitcase is going down, this suitcase is going to the left, this suitcase is going to the right, and these cases are switching. To figure out the direction, the technique I came up to solve this problem is called the line approach. Alright, here's how it works. Imagine we have an edge marker that is situated equidistant between the two suitcases. When a suitcase is transitioning and first hits the edge marker, we can run two lines from the marker to the edge of the suitcase. We can deduce the direction from the position of the shorter line. In this example, since the red or right line is shorter than the blue or left line, we can deduce the direction is going right for this suitcase, as it begins the transition starting from the right. The opposite is true for a suitcase going left. We can see the same approach when the suitcase is going up, 
The red or top line is shorter than the blue or bottom line, hence it is going up. And for parity, the opposite is true for cases going down. And if both blue and red lines are about equidistant from each other, we can deduce it is a switch. Okay, so now that we figure out the direction of each suitcase per transition, it is now very easy to keep track of the state of each moving suitcase. But that should be all the general concepts of this prototype application I'm going to develop. Now, it's finally time to code. Alright, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but just know that I wrote this in C++ and used OpenCV as a dependency. Uh, this took a decent chunk of time for development, and it certainly was not easy. There were many frustrating moments, but eventually I was able to hack something together. Okay, now here's the final result. What I have here is a recorded video of the newly built application tracking the suitcases. Right now it is paused, which is why nothing is happening. Once I play the video, keep in mind it is slowed down, and at certain times I will pause the video to explain what is going on. Let's press play, and I will immediately pause it because this beginning part is important. We can first see the suitcases have opened with the ticket amount. You're probably wondering what the colorful text on each suitcase represents. They are essentially labels for us to identify the suitcases and their ticket numbers. So in this particular game, keep in mind that L6 has 400 tickets. I will unpause and we can see the tracking application at work. Everything I've explained previously has culminated to this. We can see as the suitcases transition, I've rendered out the direction. And remember, the direction of each suitcase can be determined by the line approach we talked about in the previous section. The arrows are pretty self-explanatory as they explain the directions up, down, left, or right, but the crosses represent the switch transition. Once the transition finishes, we update the state of the suitcases, which is why you see all these colorful texts just updating. Some directions are initially incorrect, and I've written logic to double check if that direction is valid. Now I'm going to let this play out so you guys can see it in its entirety. In the end, we can see that the tracking has stopped, and remember, L6 is the 400 ticket. In this case, we should choose case 9 as our personal case. Now, if you don't believe that this tracking works, you can actually go back and manually track the cases. I slowed it down enough, so it should be pretty easy to track by eye. But with this, I have good confidence that this application works. Now, it's time to test the application live. But before we go, here's a mock-up of what the setup kind of looks like. Pretend the monitor is the arcade screen. We have a tripod set here with the webcam attached. The webcam will feed the input to my laptop, which is where my application will process the feed. And with that, let's head to the arcade. Alright, so we got ourselves this tripod. Hopefully this is tall enough, because if not, it be bad. Oh my god, it's not tall enough! Wait, it's not tall enough! This is not good. Oh. Despite being too short, we actually found a quick solution. Okay, I hope this is okay enough. Okay, now the physical setup is finished. All that's left is to do some calibration, which is what I'm doing here. I am simply changing the HSV values and adjusting some of the edge markers to fit this live setup. Alright, with the calibration now finished, it's time to put this application to the test. We have a record, hold up. Recording, we're gonna record with OBS and then we're gonna process the file. In the top right corner, I have the visualized tracking from the application in case anyone wants to follow along. Six, I six, I six. Hurry up and choose. 
A 12, 12, 12, 12. You chose case number 12. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. So what I'm really doing right now is just eliminating suitcases from play and rejecting all deals so that I can get to my personal case. I, I might have it might have messed up, but we'll we'll see. Four cases. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We still got thousand thousand tickets in play. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, this is the moment of truth. Do you think this is the Vita six ticket or the thousand ticket? I don't know. But no deal, all right? <laughs> all right, all right, open the case. Let's go, go, dude. Oh my God, it works, it works, it works. Dude, holy crap, I can't believe it. Dude, got a thousand tickets. Okay, that, that was pretty cool. All right, but there we have it. This is my little engineering project to win the max tickets of this specific arcade game. Of course, I ran into a lot of issues and as much as I kind of want to talk about them, we'll kind of be sitting here for hours. Let's just summarize that a lot of those issues are related to camera input. I learned so much from this and I'm kind of glad I've been able to figure this out and have been able to demonstrate a live success from this. Um, because a couple months ago, I would not have known how to approach this problem. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy the process of me explaining how I figured it out. And of course, you know, my semi-live demonstration. Like and subscribe if you want more of this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.